Hey folks, today I have another treat for you. This is a Caliphone school record player from the 70s. On, it's on springs here, so it's got some suspension. Nice cable in there. And it is your classic suitcase style. So I'm going to just take the lid off of here. Show you the inside of this. 1400 series operating instructions. You can pause that to read it, assuming that the camera is good enough. There's your replacement stylus information there. But yeah, this is a Caliphone record player. I have wanted one of these for years. I saw, I want to say I saw this on, was it Cassette Master's channel back in the day? I can't remember where I saw one of these. Um, pretty sure it was on Cassette Master's channel. I've seen a bunch of these on um, Radio TV Phono Nuts channel as well. And he's the reason I know... Uh, as much as I know about the, these, this product line. This is the Caliphone 1430K, which is one of the better ones. It has the better amplifier in it and uh, has some of the better features on it, too. Let me pull you off the tripod so we can look at it. So here's the machine itself. It has pretty simple controls. Some of them didn't have this pause feature, but this one does because it's a better model. Now you might hear this when I engage play. This machine has a useful feature. This is an idler drive turntable. And when you move this into play, it engages the idler in gear and pushes it against where it's supposed to be pushed against. So that means no matter what speed you have this set to when it's off, the, uh, the idler won't get a flat spot in it over time, which is really, really nice. So. What I'm going to do here is uh, plug this guy into my power strip here. And we'll take a look at this thing. This has a pretty big speaker in the front. We've been in, I've been in here a little bit to clean the pots and stuff. And um, the speaker in here is on a suspension as well. It's sort of at an angle like that. Like that. And uh, sort of floats down there and puts out... A hell of a sound, like really good bass on this thing. Um, I ended up having to get a new cartridge or a new stylus for this thing, which I think the stylus and the cartridge go together. It's one of these. This is a uh, an aftermarket um, fan steel. Forget what model it is. I have the box somewhere. I'll have to dig that out so we can see uh, which model of uh, stylus this is. But it's a brand new one. It's a brand new sapphire stylus, unfortunately. But I did get uh, some di a diamond stylus as well. But I had to get sapphire to get a flip needle. So that's what I did for now. So I'll have to buy a couple more of those just to just because sapphire styli wear out so quickly. Let's see if I can find the stylus. Uh, that's a different one. Let's see. Ah, here we are. It is uh, a fan steel 911-SS73. This stylus here, this one floating around in there, is the one it came with, and that's a uh, fan steel 78 only diamond stylus. And I also managed to pick up uh, another stylus for this thing, my stash of turntable stuff here, a 911-D7. This is similar. Uh, it's an LP only stylus that's diamond, so I have options to use for this thing. It works in this in the A static cartridges. Um, I want to say this is an 89T or an 81T. I'm not really sure. I can't remember what what is in this machine. I want to say it's an 89T. So put all this stuff back in my uh, turn my cartridge and stylus bin. Take more of a look at this. So let me turn the variac on. And look at its operation. Now when I turn it into pause, you hear the amplifier start. And put it into play, and you start to get speeds. Now this will do 
33, it'll even do 16. So, some of those weird records you can do 16. Talking book records and promotional stuff. 33, 45, and 78. So this thing covers pretty much all speeds for me. Um, I've used it to play 16s, 33s, 45s, and 78s so far. I don't own any 16s, but my old boss did. So when I brought this in and we looked at it, um, we, he, he had a 16 record that he never played. So we used that to test it. And it was some uh, thing that they used to give out to Dodge dealers in the 50s to play in the in-car record player. So it was kind of neat. So I think this thing is definitely worthy of a demonstration because it has great sound. Let me pull a few records and we'll listen to them. Let's start with a 78, shall we? So flip the needle to 78. Flip that into 78 mode. And we will give this a shot and you will hear just how good this thing sounds even with a 78. So as you can see on 78 it sounds fantastic. That's mostly what I use this for actually is to play 78s because it's such a stellar performer in that department. And of course I'm not using a very good or valuable 78, a Dina Shore one that I picked up at Goodwill. Um, but it's a very good quality recording which is why I tend to use it for uh, testing these players out. Okay, I have another LP. Uh, the Spirit of 76 literally says that on the record itself. So, here it is playing an LP. Let me flip the needle back over to the uh, LP side. George Pullman comes up with some comfortable sleeping cars so we can travel on our new transcontinental railroad. We buy Alaska from Russia, oil from Rockefeller, and tickets to the big top from P.T. Barnum. New York has Macy's, Chicago has the fire, and out west, the Indians go looking for Custer. And there you go. Plays an LP pretty darn well, too. Now the only thing left to test is a 45. So let me pull that record off real quick, and I'll grab a 45. Okay, let's try a 45. That's cut pretty loud, so it's skipping. Let's try Summer Breeze and see what happens. It sounds like it's overdriving the cartridge. Well, that demonstrates a quality these record players have. They're not too fond of loud records. So, if you put Daft Punk on here, it'll absolutely fail that, that around the world and the defunct tests. Uh, hell, even on these 45s, they're, they're a little too loud. And those two are from the 70s. So, imagine 50s ones that are cut extremely loud. They'll, they'll have an issue with these. Uh, but f I think these things shine the most for 78s. This is probably one of the best you'll find for that. Uh, but, yeah, that's a demonstration of this Califone 1430K. This was a find at a Goodwill. I went in there to uh, drop a few things off, went into the store just to look around as you do, and I saw this and I went, <gasps> so I, I picked it up. I tried it in the store and the turntable would barely spin, and I'm getting a call. But anyway, I was, pl anyway, I was plugging this in at the store, the turntable would barely spin, and uh, it turns out it didn't spin because the grease was all disgusting underneath. So took this to my old boss's place and we uh, fooled around with it. We cleaned the old grease off, applied new oil, and now it spins much better than it ever did before. And it can play records just fine. So the only thing that's, that's wrong with this is that the little light that's in this part of the tone arm is out, unfortunately. So I'm not too worried about that. I don't really care. This thing is basically designated as a 78 player 
for the most part. It's not a bad machine at all. I, I really like it. So, it was an easy fix to make work. This is a solid state one, so most of everything just worked in it. None of the t there were no tubes to go bad or paper capacitors to uh, go bad. So everything in this thing still works as it probably did back in the 70s. So, uh, made in the USA as well. So this is back when the this is this is back when the USA knew how to make high quality products. Um, these days, it's almost it almost doesn't matter where you get something from. It's pretty much going to be cheaper than it was back in the day. So there you have it. Played an LP seventy eight and some forty fives there. So this was the Califone fourteen thirty K, a school record player. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I'm sure a lot of you guys that uh, grew up in the 70s and 80s uh, remember from school when they used to teach you how to do like the hokey pokey or something. <laughs> uh, I remember one of these from a summer kindergarten class I was in as a kid. We listened to the Mary Poppins soundtrack on one of these. It was a much older 60s model, I think, but it was a caliphone. I remember that. So... This was a staple in schools for a long time, and of course now we just use computers in schools. So, yeah, that was a thing. So, there you have it. That was the Califone 1430K. I thought this was a bit of a treat. I, this is the first time I ever got to play with one of these, and they're a pretty nicely built machine. Uh, tone arm is high quality. Uh, everything is idler drive, so it's the old-fashioned style. These were idler drive even into the t early 2000s, which is crazy. I don't know if they're still idler drive now. I don't think they are. Cor you could correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyway, enough of me babbling. This was the Califone 1430K school record player. All it needed was some grease and a new stylus, or new cartridge with stylus and everything, and it, it worked. It worked. And it's a stellar machine for playing 78s. I think that's what these shine at. LPs, 45s, eh. 16s definitely because uh, it's pretty hard to find players that will play those these days brand new. In fact, I don't think they even make them at all anymore. So you really have to get a vintage player for those. So I now have a record player that can play at least the 16 RPM records. And this thing shines for 78s. So if you're a 78s collector and you want to sample a bunch of records, these are great for that. Absolutely great for that. So if you can get your hands on them, there you have it. Anyway, that's enough of my babbling. If you want to find me on social media, I'm on Twitter and Reddit down below. And if you'd like to join our Discord community, the link for that is down below as well in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.